we're asked to find the zeros here, um, and the zeros are our x-intercepts, so that's kind of important that we know. The zeros are the x-intercepts. They're also sometimes known as the solutions. Um, and what's important about knowing that they are the x-intercepts is when they are the x-intercepts, that means the y-value is zero. Or, in this case, since it's in function notation, the f of x value is zero. So to solve for the zeros, to find the zeros, the very first thing we are going to do is we're going to replace the f of x with the number zero. That allows us to find the x-intercepts where the y-value, the f of x value, is zero. Now, I was not given any specific method for how to solve this, so for me, what I would recommend doing is sort of looking at what you got. I have just an x squared term. I don't have any bx term, so square roots is what jumps out as me. I would solve this with square roots. All I have to do is move that 35 to the other side, so we'll subtract 35 from both sides. And then once that's done, I just need to divide by 5 and undo my square. So let's see, we get negative 35 is equal to 5x squared. I'm going to do a little switcheroo with my left side and the right side of my equation, so I'm going to make it 5x squared equals negative 35. And you are always allowed to do that. You can always just flip-flop the left and the right side. Uh, okay, so from here, I want to get x squared by itself, so I'm going to divide by 5. And that's going to give me x squared equals to a negative 7. Uh, I'm going to write this one more time just so it's very clear in my notes what it is I'm doing to both sides. I want to undo the square, so I'm going to take the square root. So if I can squeeze in there the plus or minus square root. That part's really important. Anytime you add the square root, it really needs to be the plus or minus. I didn't write it on this side because I knew it's just going to cancel out. Uh, a little bit of laziness, but also it's just unnecessary because it's going away. So here we get plus or minus square root of negative 7. So uh, I know immediately I'm going to have a complex solution, and that is because of this guy right here, that negative under the square root. And that's going to become an i, and 7 cannot be simplified anymore. If I start thinking about my perfect squares, perfect squares, right, 0, 1, 4, 9. I mean, I've already passed 7, so there's no perfect square that's going to go into them. So here x is my plus or minus. It's just going to stay square root of 7 and then an i. Now my i is not under the square root because it's replacing the square root of negative one. It kind of, it's it's really accounting for a square root on its own, right? Because i is the square root of negative one. And that's it, that's as far as I can go here. That is my final answer. It is a complex solution, uh, which means actually there are no real x-intercepts. This actually would not cross the x-axis. If I tried to graph this, um, it's likely gonna be, actually I can tell you exactly where it's gonna be because my y-intercept is 35. I can tell by looking at that. So my y-intercept is up here at 35, and then I have a vertical stretch by a factor of 5. So it is a very tall and skinny graph right up there with a the y-intercept of 5. So it makes sense that I have a complex solution because there's no real x-intercepts. So that's my answer, and it fits the knowledge I'm bringing to the table. Hope that's helpful. Message me anytime with questions.